Thank you for joining us in today's Connection Point in Times News Briefing podcast as we talk about news events around the world as it relates to Bible prophecy, plus we talk a whole host of other important subjects and topics from time to time. Before we jump into today's update, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please click the subscribe link below and uh, hit the bell so you get the notifications when a new video is being posted. Now let's get into this update. Each week it is amazing to see how much is going on in the world and all the different issues and situations that are happening. And from a biblical worldview, it's exciting to see how everything's just lining up so quickly. Our first headline news to bring to your attention as it's going on in uh, the Middle East right now. This came out of the Israeli National News. Calls uh, talks about how Iran tests fire sophisticated short-range missile. So on Sunday, Iran army tested a, a sophisticated short-range missile, uh, which has a range of 300 kilometers or 186 miles or so. The general said that the smart missile is capable to work in any uh, weather condition. He didn't say where the test took place. Iran's mil uh, military, the army, controls short-range missiles, uh, although larger uh, long-range uh, ones are capable of traveling over 2,000 2, kilometers or uh, 1,250 miles or so that are controlled by the uh, paramilitary Revolutionary Guard. Iran's uh, ballistic missile test and satellite launches are a cause of concern for the West, particularly the U.S., which has argued that Iran's ballistic missile uh, tests are a violation of U.N. Security Council Resolution 2231. The re resolution, which enshrined in 2015 nuclear deal between Israel, uh, Iran and uh, world powers, and says Iran is called upon to refrain uh, up to eight years from the work on ballistic missiles designed to deliver nuclear weapons. Of course, Iran is going to deny its uh, test that it has done, um, violated this resolution. Uh, the president of Iran has stressed in the past that Iran will continue to produce missiles for its defense and does not consider it a violation of international agreement. Sunday's report comes after Iran's Revolutionary Guard been grounded forces uh, near uh, drill near the Iraqi border. So anytime Iran does something and launching missiles, you take notice of it. brings more tension uh, within the Middle East and the surrounding countries because you can't trust uh, Iran. It's just a matter of time before one of these missiles will hit another country nearby. So we always need to keep a pulse on what's going on in regards to uh, Iran and their uh, development of their missiles and their nuclear program as they are a major component in the end times. Uh, moving on to our second key headline, uh, Syria claims Israel attacked near uh, Damascus. So this also came out of the Israeli national news that uh, on Sunday night that the Syrian defense intercepted Israeli aggression over Damascus on Sunday night. Uh, Syrian state uh, television reported so far no additional details are available. The Syrian air defense intercepted Israel aggression over um, um, Damascus on Sunday night shortly after 1 p uh, 1 a.m uh, where uh, Israel launched missiles from Golan Heights in the Galilee into several targets near the Sy Syrian capital according to the ministry uh, most of the missiles were intercepted earlier this month uh, the Syrian news agency reported uh, that Israel attacked targets in southern Syria an official military source in Syria said that Syrian army de uh, defense systems were activated against Israel's missiles and shot them down. He added that there are no injuries, only damaged property was caused. And so the alleged Israeli attack came hours after anti-aircraft missile fired at Israeli Air Force unmanned aerial uh, vehicle. But every time you're seeing more of these attacks or, uh, you know, in or near Damascus, you're kind of seeing uh, how closely we're getting to the prophecy of Isaiah 17 uh, being fulfilled. It's just a matter of time uh, for it to demolish uh, uh, Damascus. And maybe that will be a trigger point for the Ezekiel 38 war. We don't know. Maybe it's all going to be part of that uh, particular war. Um, either way, uh, we know that we're getting closer and closer to uh, seeing this uh, Damascus uh, um, uh, 
prophecy being fulfilled of the destruction there. So little by little, it's getting there. Now, as we mentioned in previous updates, how the Biden administration really, uh, as we can already see by their stance right now, hates Israel. They hate God. They hate the Bible because all their policies goes against the Bible, against Christianity. And uh, in this next article uh, that talks about how Biden makes history the first president in 40 years to punt on uh, contacting Israel. So he's the first president in 40 years not to contact Israel's leaders as one of his first actions in the White House setting up what could be four years of chilly relations between America and um, Israel, which is the top Middle East ally. Biden has already phoned multiple world leaders. We mentioned this in a previous report, uh, including uh, President Putin. Uh, Chinese president uh, during his first 23 days in office, yet he has not yet spoken to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, making Biden the first president in modern history uh, to punt on bolstering U.S.-Israeli relations during his initial days in office. Every president going back to at least Ronald Reagan in 1981 made contact uh, with their Israeli counterpart within a week of assuming office, according to a review of news reports. Uh, President George H. Um, Bush um, followed the trend only five days after he entered office. Uh, President Clinton, three days. Uh, George W. Bush, about seven days or so after entering into office. Barack Obama on his first day, but he also called the Palestinian leaders on that day, laying the groundwork for administration's failed bid to uh, foster peace between Israel and the Palestinians. And he was really pushing for the Palestinians, but Barack had a really cold uh, relationship with Israel. A um, uh, whole other uh, subject on that. And then, of course, President Trump not only called Benjamin Netanyahu uh, within two days, but he also invited him uh, to the Oval Office on January 22nd, two days after he took office. Um, GOP leaders in the Foreign uh, Affairs Committee raised multiple concerns with Biden's refusal to express support for Israel with a phone call. Um, in this report that talked about from uh, Mark Green, who's the re, um, representative of Tennessee, he says, I'm not sure why Biden has already called uh, leaders from other uh, nations, including China, but hasn't bothered to speak to Israel. Uh, he added on um, uh, Thursday that uh, Israel deserves to be treated with respect uh, from every world leader, especially the President of the United States. Also, Representative Ronnie Jackson of Texas added another um, a question uh, concerning this. Why is President Biden avoiding this? Uh, the is, uh, Israeli-American relationship is so vital to our national security for a litany of reasons. Uh, he urges President Biden to ignore the radical left in his party and make a strong show of support for the partisanship uh, with Israel by calling Benjamin Netanyahu. But as we mentioned before, it shouldn't surprise us in how Biden uh, is responding to all this and his policies. Uh, but again, he's got time to play Mario Kart at Camp David, uh, as we heard in other reports this week. Um, but he can't make the call to Israel, uh, which is just dumbfounding. Um, and I know he'll eventually make the call, not because he wants to, but because he has to in dealing with other matters in the Middle East and, and of course, your role as president. Now, also in dealing with the Middle East, um, this report came out of the Times of Israel, talks about how senior uh, Israeli defense commander says Hamas has 30,000 men, 7,000 rockets, and dozens of drones. Um, so the Hamas terrorist group, which is ruling Gaza, has replenished its arsenal since the 2014 war with Israel and is now a vast collection of rockets, guided missiles, drones, uh, said the Israeli military commander. Now, according to Israeli military statements or estimates, um, uh, Hamas has some 1,000 rockets, uh, some 300 anti-tank and uh, 100 anti-aircraft missiles. He also added the 
uh, that they have some th uh, 30,000 men, including 400 naval commandos who receive sophisticated training and equipment to carry out their seaborne operations, the commander added. He also spoke in condition of the anonymity under military guidelines. The smaller Islamic Jihad terrorist group, uh, which often acts independently of Hamas, uh, boasts in a similar arsenal, of, uh, said the commander. Uh, he said this. they include 6,000 rockets its dozens of drones, anti-tank and aircraft missiles, and some 400 naval forces. Hamas and the Islamic Jihad make, uh, also made the use of attack tunnels beneath Gaza uh, border. During the 2014 war, Israel discovered and destroyed around 220 tunnels uh, since hostilities ended, including the large one last October that was still under construction. And I bring this up so you just have information what's happening surrounding Israel. So you've got the threats from the Palestinians, Hamas, and Hezbollah, and this uh, Islamic uh, jihadist group, of course, and, and their number one um, problem in that uh, region of course is is iran uh, so we just need to keep a pulse on what's going on there uh, this is what israel has to deal with god will be protecting israel uh, as we see within the ezekiel 38 war Anyways, on to another signs of the time. Uh, we do mention and talk about the earthquakes in various places, and we talk about the magnitude of it, uh, but there's a lot of uh, earthquakes happening in Asia right now. Uh, just after the 7.1 earthquake off to, uh, um, in Japan, there's another uh, 6.0 that hit Papua New Guinea. So we're seeing a lot of uh, earthquakes happening, but also the frequencies of these earthquakes. Uh, the magnitude of them uh, is hit, hit into a whole new level um, uh, around the world. And I want to close with a kind of an opinion piece. Normally, I don't do an opinion piece, uh, but this one uh, caught my attention last week uh, called The Purge from Jan Markel. Uh, this was written in Janu uh, February 11th uh, of 2021. And I bring this up as, as more just as a word of warning, a wake-up call to be alert, to be aware of what is happening. I know people can read this thing, but it's just worth uh, mentioning. So the road ahead in America will be the greatest challenge ever for for people of faith. The godless left is now in charge of our country, the White House, the House, and the Senate. And these seculars are urging all leaders to stick it to the people of faith, and so uh, to take away every aspect of religious freedom. So we're going to slow, slowly see this, how this is going to play out. Uh, in their sight, as the article goes on, uh, our churches, ministries, and individuals who uh, refuse to see government as God. Uh, back in May of 2017 in the Rose Garden, President Trump used his executive pen to ensure Christians and other people of faith don't have to check their beliefs when entering the halls of government. Uh, he also prevented the federal government from uh, going after pastors and other leaders to speak about political issues from a moral perspective. Four years after of this uh, environment was too much for secularists to tolerate. The left wanted the people of faith to be targeted, bullied, and to silence. And that's exactly what we're seeing happening. So uh, a new on the scene, the counter uh, Christians, is this organization called Secularist uh, Democrats um, of America. They see Christians as Christian national movement uh, giving cover to uh, for white supremacy. Uh, they insist, rather than faith, Americans employ reason, science, evidence, uh, distangled government policies from influence of sectarian religious interests, and may have become dangerously entrenched at all levels. Even though the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, all of those principles came out of the Bible, so I don't know what they're going to do with that, in the Constitution. Uh, anyways, but this outfit has a 28-page document urging Biden administration to first uh, strip the First Amendment rights from Christians. So it's not all people, just the Christians is what they're going after here, uh, who advocate for traditional biblical positions on the sanctity of life, marriage, education, and the family. It encourages the purging of social conservatives from all levels of government. Uh, Christians are deemed uh, enemies of of the state. So the document encourages Christians to be ostracized from society. A few extremists encouraging sending Christians to re-education camps. 
brainwashing camps, indoctrination camps. And so this is today's progressive, yet some Christian leaders discourage believers from voting in the 2020 election, including uh, Dr. John Piper. Uh, they were offended by the character of President Trump, but are okay with the new assaults on every person of faith. And again, we voted not just because of President Trump, but his policies more than the person. Anyways, that's a whole other discussion. Beth Moore called Trumpism dangerous uh, to the saints of God. Really? Today's progressive movement is not? Are you folks really deluded? So, going back to 2016, when Hillary Clinton stated that people with deep-seated religious and cultural beliefs, cultural codes, and structural biases have to be changed. She wasn't challenged by anyone on the left, though. Uh, do you think that a Chinese supporting the Biden administration will welcome this challenge. Yes, elections have consequences, but that worn out phrase is hardly a comfort. Yes, the Bible calls the last days perilous times. And yes, Romans 1 is the prevailing mentality of the last days, a deprived mindset. Uh, we just want that shining city on a hill back reality check uh, it's very likely not going to happen ever again what is coming is a new world order but Christians are still called to be salt and light uh, to delay the decay no matter how much we are persecuted God has uh, uh, spent all of uh, 2020 reminding us that this world is not our home we are just passing through why would anyone want to cling to this a new day is coming a new world is coming very very soon in quote so my friends we need to pray we need to make a difference wherever we are impact the society uh where are we living uh, our neighborhoods our communities we are to be salt and light as jesus tells us how we're to impact others uh exciting times that we're living in so keep pressing on in the lord keep your eyes on the lord stay grounded in the word amen and that's it for today's update. Until next time, may the Lord radically and outrageously bless you.